Hello, we've been getting a number of common questions about P2, um, and so I just wanted to, rather than explain all of those via text, um, walk you through some of these things that a lot of people are getting stuck on in a video. Um, so one of the first things I want to point out is that when we make mistakes on our end, or we're ambiguous, we'll make these corrections up here uh, at the top. So if anything seems weird, that's a good place to check right away. Um, we're also putting dates by it. Um, sometimes, I don't see any here right now, um, but sometimes uh, these will say, uh, that we made a mistake in tester.py or something like that. Actually, there's one right here on tester.py. And when that happens, you're gonna wanna make sure to re-download any files related um, related to that so you have the latest version. Another thing we're gonna start doing is that we're gonna have an FAQ. Um, Piazza is kind of, uh, well, it's a question and answer place, but sometimes when we're seeing a lot of similar things, we're just trying to start posting a summary of that and a pinned post at the top, and we'll be linking to those from the project. Um, so check that out. Okay, so down here, uh, we see that for this project, we need to create um, a tree.py file. And in 220, I think people have like one project where they create a .py. So there's been some confusion about that. I don't think people have a lot of practice with that. Um, what it also says you should do for your own uh, debugging purposes is to create a debugging.ipynb. And uh, I'm starting to show you that as well. And I think that people that's where people are more comfortable. So heading over here to the terminal, um, I'm going to SSH into my virtual machine, and um, and I'm doing it on my uh, Azure virtual machine this time. So this is a little bit different than those of you using Google Cloud. I'm going to do this, but otherwise it's the same. There's a username and an IP address here. I'm actually going to copy that IP address, and I'm going to connect to my virtual machine. And here I am. And another thing I want to do is I want to actually set all of this up. And one of the ways that will be convenient for me to do, do that, now that we know Git, so I'm just going to head here, I'm going to say clone, and copy this. I'm going to say git clone. I'm just going to clone all the projects right here. And I'll just take a moment. Sometimes that will save you time um, in contrast to downloading one file at a time. But either way is fine. So I'm going to do that. And, and while that's running, then I also want to head over here. And I had copied, um, I had copied earlier my, uh, my IP address, and I lost it. So I'm going to copy that. And then we go there and then 2020 and here i am and uh and so i can see that this is a git repo i just checked out right here this cs320 so i'm going to head into here then s21 and then i'm in p2 and um and here's all my stuff and so you can see i have my um loans.zip for example on my mini.zip all of that and, and so that's all good and so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create my um file which is going to be um, a .py file and i can actually create those by clicking text file here. Text files um, can have many different types. One of them is a .py. And I'm just going to rename this thing tree.py. And I'm going to put some prints in here. I'm just going to say print um, I'm in a .py file, just like that. I'm going to save that. Now, there's two ways you can run .py files. Um, one of them is in the terminal. So if I head back here, and, um, and let me try doing this. So I'm going to say python3 tree.py. I can just say python3 and then the name of the file. And oh, that didn't work. Let me just say ls and see where I am. Um, apparently, I don't have that here. And that makes sense because I, I had just checked out the CS320 and it was inside of that. So I'm going to say cd CS320. And I hit tab to autocomplete these things. And then s21. And then, uh, and then this is p2. So I'm going to go here, say ls again. There I see there's my tree.py, and if I say python3 tree.py, it will just run that and it can print that message and I can do that as many times as I want. That's one right way to run a tree um, uh, or run a .py file such as this. The other thing that I'm suggesting in the, in the uh, project description is that you create a notebook just for your own purposes um, where you do debugging work. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm just gonna call this debugging. I could really call it anything. And then if I want to, I can import my dot, dot .py file just like this. And, and one thing that's going to be a little bit different when I'm importing is that I don't put the dot .py there. It automatically figures that out. And so whenever I do the import, then, then it will run all of the code inside of that dot .py file. And then one caveat to that is it only happens the first time. So if I do it like that, well, um, I only get that message once. And, and to see it again, I'd have to do a kernel restart and run all. And then this would run again right here, just like so. So that's all good. Um, so back here um, in these directions, 
Oh, and where did I go? Let me head back here. In these directions, one of the things that I was recommending you do is you put this um, at the top, this from tree import star. So let me let me just give you an example of how this works. Um, I could put different things inside of my .py file. For example, I could say, um, uh, let me say uh, example variable equals one, two, three. Um, so if I want to access this over here, let me say, um, let me try running that. That's not going to work because of this way I imported it, import tree. But when I say import tree, I have to say tree dot to actually make that work. Now the other problem here is that um, I haven't restarted since I changed my .py file. So I want to make sure I save it, which I did just a few seconds ago, and then do a kernel restart here. Restart and run all. And then that works just fine. Now, if I want to have this be more convenient, one of the things that um, I might do is I might say um, from tree uh, import and then the specific thing I want. And then if I do that, then down here, I don't need to say tree dot in front of it. So that's kind of a more convenient style we'll often use. I'm just gonna delete this up here. And, um, and so that's good. Another thing that uh, we're gonna do, and I'm suggesting here, I'm just gonna say star. And that way, if I added more variables in my .py file, for example, I wouldn't have to add each one. And so that still works just fine. And it's gonna be the same way if I have, um, if I have functions or classes or things like that, those resources will be directly available to me. And, and so heading back here, um, you can see that that was this part here, this from tree import star. This other thing, this auto reload, what this is gonna help me do is it's gonna mean that I don't have to do a kernel restart um, every time, right? So it's not gonna work perfectly. So let me try this for example. And if I try to print this off, um, you see that didn't actually change. But if I do a kernel restart and run all, then what are we gonna get? Then we're gonna actually get the one, two, four there. So, so this will help you sometimes. Um, for example, uh, if I'm not adding a new class, but changing a method in an existing class, this feature works pretty well. Um, if I'm adding a brand new class, I find it doesn't work very well. So it's better than nothing, but I'll, I'll, I'll have that there. So heading back here, and I'm going down a bit, there are all these cases where I have example code, right? And so the idea is that you could have this code here in a cell. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to use something that came from that tree module and, um, and try to see how it's working, right? So, so I can try to do this. And it's saying, okay, error, zip CSV reader um, is not defined, right? And one of the things I'm gonna do here, if you haven't already done it, is you should go to view and say toggle line numbers. That's gonna really help you figure out where errors are. And so I see input three here. So this is in cell three that the error occurred, and then it's on, on line one, right? So zip CSV reader. So, so what I'm really first trying to do whenever I get an error is I try to see exactly where it crashed, and then I read this, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I didn't define it yet. Um, this looks like a class name. So I'm, I'm using that class name to create a new object of type uh, zip CSV reader. So I'm going to head over here on my notebook. And I'm going to say class that. And, um, and then if I wanted to, I could say like parent classes uh, here. Um, we only really have one case where you have to do inheritance in this project. And that's with the predictions later. So I'm not going to do that for now. And for now, I could just say, yeah, so, so let me come over here and then let me try running this again. And it's still not defined, so that's a good time to do a kernel restart and run all. All right, so now what is it saying? It's saying that it takes no parameters and it's actually saying object. So where did object come from? Remember that if I look at the method resolution here, every type inherits from object. And because I don't have a, an init method, it's using the one from object. So what I should really do here is I should have my own init. So I'm gonna say init and self, and I'll just have this here. Let me try running that now. If I run this again, um, finally you actually saw that I didn't have to do a kernel read start and run all thanks to this because I'm just making changes to an existing class. So this is good and now it's saying, it takes one positional argument, but two were given, right? So what are the two? So, so here are my arguments. So, you know, this is one argument. The other argument is the new object that's created, right? So this is a new object. And then this is a second argument. 
And so when I'm coming over here, I expect to have two, um, two parameters, right? If I have two arguments, I have to have two parameters. And so that's self is always the first one. And then the second one can be, um, well, it could be the name of the file, right? So it could be like path, something like that. And I'll just say like self.path equals path. I could do something like that. And so now if I run this, I can see it is actually working and, and that's all fine. So um, just a couple more things I wanna show you here. Um, let's say I had some sort of error, right? So self.divide, and, and this is not really code that you write for your project. I'm just kind of messing around to demonstrate things. So if I have something there that's gonna cause an error, Um, actually, let me think what I could even do that would be better than that. I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say, let me come up with a better error. I'm gonna import pandas as pd, and then down here, I'm just gonna say pd.read csv um, does not exist.csv. So let's try doing this. And uh, and again, right, this is this is just silly. I'm just trying to make it crash just for the purpose of um, teaching debugging. I'm gonna run this thing again. And okay, now I have this big long error, right? And as I'm reading through here, I see there's a whole bunch of different levels to it. And, and so there's a couple of things I may notice. One is I wanna figure out what the error was. And that's good, okay, does not exist uh, CSV. And then I wanna figure out where the error happened. And what I'm seeing here is that there are all these different files, right? There's like this parsers PYX. I didn't write that thing. Parsers Pi, I didn't write that either. I'm just gonna go up a bit, another parsers.py. Really what I'm looking to do is to see the first place as I'm trying to get from um, bottom up where I was actually writing some code. And I see that, okay, I did write tree.py and it crashed on line 10 of, of, um, of tree.py, right? So I might head over here and look at this line 10 here. And then I would think about that error I had seen um, with that line, right? I might do that. The other thing that I might do in addition to that is even though this is where it crashed, I wanna know really kind of what triggered this code to run, right? A lot of things in my v.py uh, might be methods and I wanna know where they were called. And so I can see that this code here that was running, this init.py, or this init um, that was running because of this line one inside of cell eight, right? And so I see cell eight is right here. So I see what happened is that this line here, this um, triggered init, and then in init, it crashed on this line, right? And it didn't immediately crash, right? It called into this other method that the pandas people wrote and called to a bunch of other things, but I'm not really too worried about that because that's deep inside of their module. And I really wanna know Kind of what is the closest place in my code to the crash and that's right here because this is closest to the bottom uh, so hopefully that helps you get started and uh, doing some debugging um, one other thing i want to point out that i just uh, uh i'm seeing a lot of people get confused about when i say something like this data reader dot paths notice there's no parentheses after here so this is a an attribute right how do i create attributes um, i create attributes like this so this is like an attribute name equals something right and then down here i might say something like well let's say this is a, a method name here right and then whatever i would have here let me just um actually put something here so the coloring is wrong right so so this is how i create attributes right um, this is really kind of almost like putting a value in a dictionary i really think of objects as being similar to dictionaries and then i can put um, instead of putting different um, keys and values in them, I'm putting different attribute names and then attribute values. And then down here is a method name. And so when I'm reading code like this, I see there's no parentheses after, and that's how I know that that's an example of an attribute. Down here, right, I do have parentheses. I'm making a call. Here I'm making calls. So these uh, low JSON and rows would be examples of methods. Um, so hopefully that gives you some pointers in terms of reading this code and then figuring out what you need to do. And then of course, I'm not trying to actually implement it now. But the idea is that you can copy these things to your notebook and paste them. And of course, I haven't done a lot of stuff here, right? So that's just trying to crash. But the idea is that when you run this into your notebook, you should see the same things um, uh, that we're expecting you to see uh, right here. Anyway, have fun with the project and let us know if you have any questions.